Welcome to Quantum Analyst, a channel focused on quantum technology, with fact-based research. There are several approaches to building a quantum computer, including superconducting, trapped ions, photonics, topological qubits, among others. Notably, silicon-based quantum computing has been gaining traction in recent years, with at least seven companies championing this method. In this video, I'll guide you through each of these seven companies, helping you gain a comprehensive understanding of the quantum computing landscape and aiding your investment decisions. Without further ado, let's dive in. Quantum computing technology is a rapidly evolving field with several competing approaches. Four of these have particularly gained traction. Superconducting. Currently the most advanced, this approach is championed by industry giants like Google, IBM, and Rigetti. Trapped ions. Gaining swift momentum, this method is favored by companies such as IONQ, Quantinuum, AQT, Oxford Ionics, Universal Quantum, Electron, among others. Photonics. This approach, which has seen significant advancements recently, is backed by companies like Psi Quantum, Xanadu, and Quantum Source. Silicon. While not as renowned as the others, this approach is rapidly gaining interest. At least seven companies, and counting, are venturing down this path. Among the seven companies, by domicile country, two from Australia, one from the UK, one from Ireland, one from Canada, one from Japan, and one from the US. By history, five startups and two established companies. Interestingly, all five startups are university spinouts. Now, let's dig into them one by one. The first company is Silicon Quantum Computing, SQC, from Australia. It is based in Sydney, founded in 2017 as a spin out from the University of New South Wales, UNSW. The company is led by Professor Michelle Simmons, a renowned figure in the atomic electronics field. Her team has developed the world's first single atom transistor, the world's narrowest conducting wires, and more. The company has outlined its short, medium, and long-term goals. In the short term, the company plans to deliver an atomic-scale integrated circuit in 2023. In the medium and long term, the company aims to deliver a 100-qubit quantum processor in 2028 and an error-corrected quantum computer by 2033. Based on the company's statements, they have completed two funding rounds. In 2017, they secured $83 million Australian dollars in seed capital. By July 2023, they had raised $50.4 million of the planned $130 million from their Series A round, valuing the company at $195.3 million. The second company, Dirac, also hails from Australia. In fact, Dirac is a spin off from Silicon Quantum Computing. Founded in May 2022, it is led by Professor Andrew Jorick, whose team is affiliated with the University of New South Wales. Dirac's launch was facilitated by Electus Capital, an investment company. They supported Dirac by acquiring the Silicon CMOS-related intellectual property and capital equipment from Silicon Quantum Computing. The company's name, Dirac, is believed to be a nod to Paul Dirac the English theoretical physicist who shared the 1933 Nobel Prize in Physics with Erwin Schrödinger. Dirac believes that a quantum computer will need billions of qubits to be useful, and that the silicon approach is the best way to achieve this scale. Dirac also believes that the silicon approach has several advantages over other methods such as superconducting, photonics, and ion traps, because it is much smaller, qubits can be moved around, can tolerate heating effects, and errors are easier to correct. The company envisions that, over the next 10 years, our Dirac chips will progress from prototypes to working silicon quantum processor chips at nanometer scales that other quantum bit technologies will never achieve. Funding-wise, Electus Capital is currently Dirac's largest shareholder. Electus helped Dirac launch by acquiring the necessary intellectual property from silicon quantum computing. According to Dirac's news archive, in July 2023, the company received $3 million grants from the Australian government and the NSW government, respectively. The third company is Quantum Motion, from UK. 
The company was founded in 2017 by scientists John Morton at University College London and Simon Benjamin at the University of Oxford. Quantum Motion believes that chips similar to those in a phone will perform true quantum computing. The company's goal is to fast track the development of truly fault tolerant quantum computers and reach 1 million qubits and beyond by leveraging existing knowledge in device fabrication within the trillion dollar silicon industry. Quantum Motion is still in the prototype development phase and has not yet announced any commercial products. Funding wise, the company announced in February 2023 that it had raised £42 million in equity funding, led by Bosch Ventures. This brings Quantum Motion's total funding to £62 million, including over £20 million in previous equity and grant funding. The fourth company is Equal One from Ireland. The company is a spin out of University College Dublin. It focuses on integrating a complete quantum computing system into a single chip which they call QSOC, with the vision of building desktop quantum computers. Equal One believes that silicon is the only technology capable of scaling qubits to achieve quantum advantage, and that foundry silicon is the only viable commercial option. The company has successfully demonstrated silicon spin qubits using a standard foundry process. Equal One has research and development teams in Dublin and Silicon Valley, California. It is still in the prototype development phase and has not yet announced any commercial products. Funding-wise, the company has secured €20 million Euros in blended, grant and equity, funding from the European Innovation Council and venture capital funding from several venture capital firms. The fifth company is Photonic, from Canada. It was founded by Simon Fraser University professor Stephanie Simmons in 2016. The company's technology is unique in that it uses photonically linked silicon spin qubits to achieve fault tolerance, communication, and scale simultaneously. Photonic believes that silicon always wins and is committed to silicon as the dominant design in quantum computing. Photonic also believes that quantum networks and quantum computers will ultimately be the same technology. In a recent interview, Stephanie Simmons said that the company is in stealth mode. She also said that Photonic is the biggest quantum computing company that you've never heard of. And now the company has more than 100 people. In terms of funding, there is no official disclosure, but Simmons said that the company has enough resources to develop its technology. The sixth company is Hitachi from Japan. Hitachi is a multinational conglomerate headquartered in Tokyo, founded in 1910. Over the decades, Hitachi has diversified its operations to encompass a wide range of businesses. In the latest Fortune Global 500 list, Hitachi ranked 153 globally and 11 among Japanese companies, with a revenue of $80 billion and over 300,000 employees worldwide. In Hitachi's 2024 mid-term management plan, the company sets a goal of developing a 1 megabit class silicon quantum computer by FY 2030. Hitachi has been working on this goal for years, leveraging its strong expertise in electronics research and collaborating with many outside research institutions. Hitachi has been making progress towards developing a silicon quantum computer. On June 12, 2023, the company announced that it had proposed and confirmed the effectiveness of a shuttling qubit method for efficiently controlling qubits, with the goal of practical implementation. Hitachi has also begun developing a quantum operating system suited to control of a quantum computer, including one that adopts the proposed technology. The last one is Intel, from the United States. Given Intel's pioneering role in silicon computing for over half a century, it's no surprise they've opted for the silicon approach in quantum computing. At the Intel Innovation event on September 19, 2023, Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger said, our approach is different. We are using silicon, we are the only company working on silicon qubits and using the same process and materials that we're already using, tweaking them a little bit, to create leading edge qubits. If we get this working, we can do it at scale. On June 15, 2023, Intel announced its latest quantum research chip, Tunnel Falls, a 12 qubit silicon chip. This represents Intel's most advanced technology in the quantum computing space, and it is about a million times smaller than alternative approaches. They plan to launch a next generation chip next year. Final thought 
while the silicon approach to quantum computing entered the scene later than methods like superconducting or trapped ions, it's clearly gaining traction. This momentum is evident from the increasing number of global companies adopting this approach, the influx of capital investments, and the collaborative efforts of governments. Given these indicators, there's a strong case for the silicon approach to evolve rapidly and achieve significant breakthroughs. However, the silicon method presents a higher entry barrier. It demands not only foundational research breakthroughs but also expertise in semiconductor design and advanced fabrication capabilities. For instance, the cutting-edge EUV lithography systems from ASML, pivotal in current commercial production, come with a staggering price tag of over $340 million each. Moreover, their global availability is limited to a handful of foundries. Intel has already used EUV machines in its Tunnel Falls chip. Despite the challenges, I anticipate that the silicon approach will have huge potential, especially in terms of scalability. It is an approach that every watcher of the quantum computing industry needs to keep an eye on. That concludes today's video. Please leave any comments or feedback below. If you feel you've learned something new, please like and subscribe. Your support is greatly appreciated and will help me continue creating content. Thank you.